It's smelling good in the kitchen right now. Again, we have Steve and uh, Manny with Jolie's Bistro. And uh, we have some very special dish going on. You want Manny? Explain to him again what we're doing. So we're making a chipino fish stew, which is uh, loads of Louisiana seafood, uh, some mussels, some scallop. Uh, in our case, we're going to have some Louisiana drum and Louisiana uh, shrimp. I'm going to cook that down in a tomato herb broth. Okay. So we added our shrimp. We have garlic. We have some shallots. Our delcom shrimp. We're going to add our drum, which comes from Lake Pontchartrain. Our in-house herb seasoning. And how many different herbs do you got here, Manny? Uh, listen, here we have uh, two herbs and a few spices, some black pepper, some cayenne, uh, salt, and a little bit of basil and a little bit of thyme. Okay. I'm gonna put some heat back on the skillet. And to this, we're going to add our scallops. Mmm. Scallops are the best. Right behind jumbo lump crab meat, that's mm -hmm. scallops are good. Yeah, I, and you know, Two of the items in this dish are things we just don't happen to have off the Louisiana coast, or we wouldn't right. be using Louisiana. Oh, yeah, of course. However, the, the mussels are harvested from what are known as the yes. best muscle producing area in the, in the, the northern hemisphere, which is uh, Prince, Prince Edward, Edward Island. Island. Those are the only mussels I ever used at Steamboat. So to this, I've added some fresh thyme and our bay leaf. And that's going to infuse our tomato broth. Our mussels, we want to add these last because they do seem to open fast and as soon as mussels are open, they're Fini. open shut clean mm -hmm. case, they're done. Uh, we're going to deglaze our pan with a little bit of white wine. Take your time. One of the great things, uh, well, one of the, the really important things about this dish and, is the, the timing of each of the seafood. Yes, definitely. In you don't order want to overcook it, any, but you don't want to undercook them either. In order to all have right. it all come out cooked perfectly, you have to be very careful about how, putting in each ingredient in the right order and giving it adequate time so that when you put those mussels in and they steam open, everything is Ready. succulent, it's not been dried out, it's cooked perfectly, and, and that's what makes the dish. Yeah, you, you, it's so easy to overcook seafood, like Absolutely. so quickly. I used to have a guy would come to, uh, actually Mr. Frankie's uh, brother, he used to come all the time to the steamboat and he would uh, order snapper or tilapia or whatever, and he, he'd say, I just wanted Broad in the oven, you know what? You know, baked in the oven. But he said, I just don't. I want it about medium rare, medium. And I'm. So my first time hearing that, I said, Can you for real? <laughs> oh yeah. He said, I don't even. I don't want even want it cooked all the way. So, whatever you want, man. That's on you. So. Uh, yeah, I mean, you, know, you can't eat it less, you know, less cooked if you like. We we all know that you can you can work for two days on a on a great seafood gumbo stock and have an awesome gumbo stock and then ruin the gumbo uh, by throwing the in the seafood and overcooking it. You, Man, I've seen definitely. people have a rolling, done that. a rolling, boiling gumbo and throw some oysters in there and just let it roll. And, I'm, and I'd ask them, Man, what, what, did you, <laughs> what did you just do? And you know, like, why did you do that? Well, I'm trying to get the flavor in there. That's, what, that's why you dump the, the oyster liquor in there and keep the oysters. Sure. It, 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 lots of dishes. There, there's so much about technique. I mean, it's not, and it's not that anybody can't do it. It's just being aware of what the techniques are, mm -hmm. paying attention, and those are the things that make dishes extraordinary. You can put yeah. all the best ingredients in the, the world. Makes the good dishes great. That's, that's exactly. what separates it. Yeah. You, you got to put it a on the table and little care. at perfect. Ex perfect execution, which is what we shoot for at, at Jolie's. We have an awesome kitchen staff. Okay, so you, the last ingredient you had? The last ingredient we put in that I told you guys about was the dry white wine. Mm -hmm. uh, to that I added a little bit of fish, fish stock, fish stock uh, which we make from the bones of the drum we bring in. And then to this, we're adding some peeled tomatoes. And the heat is basically gonna do the rest for us. Uh, we're going to add in our mussels, and two things that mussels let out whenever you cook them, one is moisture and the other is salt. So you want to make sure to not over salt it while it's cooking, but adjust the salt after it's cooked. Sure. Yes. Oh man, while you uh, getting ready to, before you do that, why don't you mention a couple of your dishes that you do that are gluten-free at uh, Jolie's? At Jolie's we do a couple of gluten-free dishes, uh, mainly to uh, kind of complement the menu. A lot of our dishes on the menu, we 
have available gluten-free. So the pork chop that Steve was telling you about is the gluten-free dish. Uh, we have a couple beef options. We have a filet, a uh, strip. We also do a blackened tuna that is gluten-free and a seared scallop with a cable berry lemon sauce as well. Wow. Yeah. Why? So you can, you can adjust a lot of our, our dishes with minor adjustments to remove any gluten and, and that it doesn't seriously alter the Well, like you said, the, the, quality, the, the, flavor the, of the, the people dish. can still like experience you know your your wonderful place and and your food and not really feel like they're being you know just kind of we're here to see this you know yeah very good the dish is looking excellent that's yeah. for sure it smells great that's the thing it definitely does okay so now that our seafood is kind of cooked through almost there uh the way you want to time your mussels um like you were saying that medium rare <laughs> medium <laughs> part uh when we do reach that you throw in your mussels and by the time your mussels open up then the rest of the dish is complete and it comes comes to a, a good finish i mean you can eat like about 100 of those little mussels <laughs> and never get full <laughs> yeah we have an awesome mussel dish with prince edward island mussels uh in a garlic cream sauce and then we, we serve ciabatta bread, yeah. which we serve to everybody at every mm -hmm. table. And our ciabatta bread comes with a um, black cherry and sage butter that we make in-house. Mm -hmm. But what I was going to say about the bread is you get that bowl of mussels with garlic creme sauce and you get that loaf of ciabatta bread and it, you just get down and get messy. And get <laughs> uh, that That's is another amazing. addictive dish that we have uh, uh, another we have several customers that come in and that's all they will order. Oh, yes. It's one of those deals where they just get, they find what they yeah. want and they get stuck on it. Well, I mean, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah. yeah. Well, Actually, guys, you know? we're going to go ahead and go to a short break real quick and we're going to come back and finish the dish with Manny and Steve. Yeah.